Mal has magical powers. Like, for sure she was also madly in love with Evie. Mal and I, same, same baby. Hey, you guys. This is Dove Cameron here. And today, I am looking back on some moments that have shaped my career, my identity, who I am. This is Becoming Dove Cameron. Oh my God, okay, so Disney career. Let's talk about it, let's get into it. We had this running joke. <laughs> um, me and Jessica Marie Garcia. Willow, her character, and Maddie had this like suspiciously gay relationship. And we kind of, we had this whole backstory the whole time that they were, they were in love. And there was this, <laughs> there was this day where like, I swear to God, the writers were, the writers were fucking around. It was so funny. Willow and Maddie had come back from carpentry camp which was just like the queerest, craziest storyline. Willow had this phrase, she went, Willow doesn't go down. Come on, they were fucking around. That had to be, that had to be on purpose. But yeah, I definitely imagine Maddie went off to college and was like, oh, why was I dating boys? Well, that was definitely part of my experience was like how many shapes I had to fit into to date certain men. And then being like, this is painful, this is painful, this is painful. Why does this feel so painful? And it was because I, was, I had this sort of performatively feminine thing going on that um, I found was very unnatural to me. When I came to terms with my identity and I started dating men and women, I was like, oh, okay. That's why this hurt so badly. I was wearing shoes that were the totally wrong size. And that's what I imagined for both Liv and Maddie. I imagine that Liv went off to New York to work on her theater career and was like, I'm definitely bi. Mal was just pan from the very beginning. Mal's a pixie. Mal has magical powers. Like, for sure she was also madly in love with Evie. Mal and I, same, same baby. Oh my God, Hairspray Live. Hairspray Live was probably the scariest thing still to this day that I've ever done because it was a crossbreed of like film, TV, and live music, but you only had one chance to get it right and then it was immortalized forever, right? I saw the movie for the first time when I was in theater camp. <laughs> the beginning of all good queer stories. Actually, I had the poster on my wall. Wow, it's all coming flooding back to me. And what was it like to play the villain? Babe, I, I always play the villain. <laughs> it's my queer camp destiny to always play the villain. But I also feel like that's kind of the music that I make now is it's like, I set out on this kind of goal to make music for the villain who is the main character. Because doesn't that just represent all of us, you know? The villain is the most interesting, complex, and the most deeply feeling of any film and any, any uh, you know, endeavor, any creation. Uh, and you know, villain deserves to be the main character, I think. Ah, winning the Emmy. Yeah, that was definitely mind-blowing. I think it really did change my perception of myself because up until that point, I hadn't thought I needed peer validation. I feel like that's a very universal experience. Is you, you grow up feeling not seen, not fully experienced. And so definitely like big moments like this are very humbling and I'll probably never wrap my mind around it because it's very validating. It's moving. It's like, a, you know, very human. And I don't understand how I'm here, but it's amazing. Oh yeah, the We Belong Instagram Live. This was actually really scary. Same-sex love deserves more representation in general, representation in, in art and in media. Speaking as somebody who is um, bi, I didn't want my art and my visuals to only reflect um, heterosexual couples. It's funny, I've never spoken about it, but it's surprisingly emotional. Basically what had happened was I, I released a song called We Belong. There was a lyric video that was created. The lyric videos get created by you know, an outside source and then you approve and give notes and whatever. When the first round came back, I was like, oh my God, this is beautiful, this is sick. Um, but I, it's, only, it's only men and women and I was just like, I would really love to see, you know, a more <laughs> diverse representation of love. So let's have the next round come back with, you know, some women loving women, men loving men, and then just some like ambiguous, just so everybody feels represented. And when I put it out, I was really happy with it. And I think a lot of people felt I was trying to market the song to be a queer song when it's not explicitly queer lyricism. And they thought I was a straight artist. And so I think some people were a little miffed about that. Marrying my personal and professional lives and worlds was something that I 
was so sure was never gonna happen. And I didn't even think about it. So when this moment arrived, when it was like, I just sort of felt, I think I live off of instinct and I just felt instinctively this was the moment where this was gonna happen for me. And I was just gonna tell the world, clear up any you know false pretenses that I was queer baiting and make sure people knew that I was, um, you know, coming from wanting to represent my community. Woo! Schmigadoon! Wow, look at that, she's cute. Um. <laughs> I mean, you must really be hurting. But don't you worry, Betsy is gonna make it all better. Would you like that? Yes. Yes, I would. This is the most camp show of all time. Like, I really struggle to find a show that is more camp than this. I was really lucky enough to be in this phenomenal series that is a sort of a love letter to the American musical. So in this scene, Betsy is really trying to get Josh to, um, you know, fuck her on a picnic blanket, essentially. <laughs> Which is so funny because uh, Keegan is like my big brother, so it was like so hilarious. And we filmed this very last, when it was like one of the last days it was just me and Keegan and the whole rest of the cast had left. And then at this point it was like, ew, we have to kiss. <laughs> it was like the worst news. It was like, oh my God, okay, get it over with. But it, he's, he's such a joy. This whole thing was such a joy. The musical theater is so important to me, it formed me. Um, but there are not very many roles that are empowered female roles. The, you know, the female ingenue is typically wallpaper at best. She has not original thought, not an original thought in her brain. Even the ones that were like very progressive for the time, we look back at now and we're like, oh, you are a reflection of the leading man. You are essentially what the leading man wishes. And so this kind of like over-sexualized, hyper vulnerable, voluptuous kind of like, eyes so wide, you could fall into them for days. It was really healing for me to play because it was like so self-aware. The writing was so self-aware and it to, to be able to lean into that and make fun of it kind of gave me a new love for the musical genre. The Gay Times cover, this was amazing. This was really special for me. When I was approached by Gay Times and they said that they wanted to put me on the cover, that was another one of those like, oh, okay, <laughs> I am here kind of things. It was one of those like shock me into like reality moments. This cover was all over the place, like everywhere I went and my community and my friends and everybody were constantly sending it to me and it was really emotional. <laughs> Sorry, but it was, it was really emotional because I don't like walk around thinking that uh, I really, and I don't mean this in any sort of like self-effacing, like I don't mean this in a negative way. I walk around looking at the world around me. I don't walk around thinking the world around me is looking at me. And I like that that way. I like to exist as a sort of like a small fish in a massive sea. Life is far too exciting for me to get trapped in this, right? The Gay Times cover was definitely a big shift for me in that because to hear from so many people that they felt positively represented um, by, by this and that they, you know, they, they were happy to see someone um, being who they are so loudly. I can sort of be bolder and bigger and take up more space knowing that I am actually um, acting on behalf of more than just myself which is a deep honor that I carry. I also feel lucky to feel in touch with the fact that my truth of who I am and my relationship with myself and the world around me is my number one priority. And my career, if anything is lost because of that, it wasn't worth having. And I definitely feel lucky to feel that way. I, I know that's a total, total fucking massive privilege, but I feel lucky that I was at the point in my life where I was ready to say, you know, if, if this um, negatively impacts my career, I truly couldn't care less. Oh my God. Right now I'm watching myself on Snatch Game on this previous season of RuPaul's Drag Race uh, with Raven. <laughs> and with the best hair anyone's ever seen. Dove Cameron is here. Now, what's your secret to looking so gorgeous? Well, you know, I take about half the time as Raven, but about twice the duct tape. <laughs> I had the most fun of my whole fucking life on RuPaul's Drag Race. Like, the most fucking fun. To meet the queens was a deep honor. I was like, to go back and talk to them in Untucked, please.
this show has done so much for me in terms of my identity and feeling uh, represented and accepted and celebrated and bringing joy to so many people and then really creating a, a worldwide community for queer people. It's done so much for the queer community, this show, you know, no matter how you feel about it. I think that that's inarguable. I never wanted to leave. I was so honored. <laughs> Great. Um, all right, this is, I'm watching myself in my boyfriend music video that just came out. Sexy, overall vibes, very high, very hot. Basically, I kind of wanted like a sort of a sapphic two villains. It was very important to me that the girl who we're singing to was like a force of nature, you know, herself. It should feel like two absolute powerhouse sapphic villain energies coming together to create this like sexy, anthemic, naughty experience. I really love the music I created before. I'm always gonna love it. And I really understand how much it means to the fans. But I really honestly can say that the music I was creating before was from an idea of who I thought I was. And the music I'm creating now is from who I am. And those are two very different things. And I feel very privileged to be able to have reached this point and now I just want to keep creating from here and I feel very excited for for yeah everything that's to come and the support that you guys have given me thanks for fucking around and thanks for being so present to my career through all of its iterations and this super new exciting chapter you know I love you guys get to your local courthouse oh. <laughs>